welcome to the quint you have got the big news that prime minister narendra modi made a surprise visit to leh ladakh and gave a very inspiring speech to the soldiers but there are many more messages to understand all of that we have invited lieutenant general kamal dawar who was the first uh, head director general of defense intelligence agency uh, thank you for sparing time for us sir the first question is obviously uh, it is of course a morale boosting exercise for our troops but there is there are many more messages what are those messages according to you you see the nation is passing through a grave security crisis and in eastern ladakh as we all know since the last two months or so the chinese have transgressed at many places uh, across the line of actual control and uh, they have you know built up a fair amount of strength of troops tanks artillery of course in their own area in their own sides or their own perceptions of the line of actual control and the, and the indian armed forces have also responded equally and in full and determined measure and we've also deployed and now we are virtually you can say in most some places eye to eyeball to eyeball so today's uh, today's so called surprise visit by the prime minister i think was, was has been most welcome as far as the troops are concerned he's gone and addressed the troops as is customary that whenever there is a crisis and troops are deployed on the on the in the in the borders prime ministers defense ministers you know do go and visit the troops and their morale naturally goes high there's no question about it and today our prime minister also had done the same today uh, he also gave a stirring speech in nimu which is close to leh and addressed a large number of our troops there he also expressed total faith not only his but of the entire country Uh, in the in the bravery in the courage and the professionalism of the indian armed forces who have always risen to the occasion uh, whenever a crisis a security crisis has uh, you know occurred in india but beyond uh, the, you know addressing the troops and raising their morale and things like that there are two there are a couple of other th things also issues also which are important one is that the prime minister himself having gone to the ground would have been briefed by the army commander the corps commander as to the exact situation on the ground which is very important to know at times when we are in delhi we may not know fully what is happening really uh, you know on the ground so he would have been briefed and he would have you know got a hands on briefing and what are the problems what are the opportunities what are, what are, what are our strengths from the troops uh, and their local commanders on the ground so that is very important for the prime minister to know and he would have got a first class hands on briefing from our local commanders the second thing if you now let's raise the level about his visit it is you see one is the visit as i said the other important point is strategic messaging strategic messaging to our adversary who has piled up a large number of troops and equipment and uh, you know uh, tanks and artillery guns and this that and the other so a message would have gone to china also who have been creeping westwards since the last many years you know as we all know that uh, there is differences in the perceptions of the line of actual control but you know the differences is also not all that much in the sense the chinese after the 62 war had managed to reach their so called 1959 1960 claim lines and by the time the war ended in on 20th november 62 they had already you know taken whatever they felt was theirs of course wrongly but nevertheless mm -hmm. but over the last many decades they have been creeping westwards and this time they have uh, come in in a very big way which has never happened before and in much greater strength so that is a cause of concern for example in the depsang plains uh pangong so the lake between finger 4 and finger 8 and in the gilwan valley which they had never come even in the last many many years many decades they've never transgressed this time and this unfortunate incident on the night of 15 16 was on the gilwan valley lac crossing actually 
and uh, you know in chumar and depsang in 2013 2014 they also had coming but then after about 20 21 days they had gone back after the you know we have these border management protocols signed by with them there are five of them from 1993 onwards right. but this time their uh, intentions seem to be far more devious and uh, so we so india has to be very careful as to and we have to gauge what is the intention of the chinese who themselves are facing a lot of problems these these days as you know they are also combating the pandemic covid 19 which they have gifted to the entire world and the whole world is in a disarray the chinese themselves are also uh, combating it inside the chinese as you know have got a major problem with taiwan in the south china sea a very major nearly pro independence movement in hong kong mm-hmm. they've also got problems in zingji in the in the zingjiang valley so and things like that yeah. will it be correct to interpret that today's speech of prime minister modi is a clear message that military option is very much open in that context because there are transgressions at multiple points uh, and standoff is continuing do you think logically it lends us to a situation where india will have to push them back Yes, I think that's a very relevant question. Though uh, I would not like to go into the realm of conjecture as far as the next few weeks are concerned, because as you know, diplom- diplomatic talks are also going on between uh, you know the foreign ministers, and I'm sure behind the scenes activities would have been uh, going on. The Russians also, I'm sure, are talking to the Chinese uh, because uh, the Russians are both friends of the Chinese and ours. but what happens in the next few weeks i think what will happen is that we are also as i mentioned we are also fully prepared the air force is on the alert additional according to media reports additional troops formations have also been moved into ladakh by us so we are also very well prepared for any localized fire fight or whatever it is whichever way it, it may escalate but uh, what may happen or will not happen i think is is going into the realm of conjecture and i would not like to you know just shoot off the hip that this may happen and that not may not happen but all i want to say is uh, to you is and to your viewers is that whatever options the chinese exercise india has to be fully prepared now because if we do not prepare now and give the chinese a befitting reply in case they do anything anything mischievous then i can assure you the chinese strategic footprint will continue to expand and eastern ladakh and ladakh is too vital a region for us to uh, to even have a setback here we cannot have a setback here because it will impinge it will impact very gravely on our security uh, in the sihachin glacier towards uh, in the in jammu and kashmir and you know mm-hmm. towards our west northwestern theaters right. so far uh, uh, to deter china um, uh, several economic and diplomatic strategic efforts have been made uh, what kind of results they have shown so far do you think the economic diplomacy and especially saying no to anything that china does in the space of technology will be a very serious setback to china and that will work on them yes as you know you know not only us i'll come to india later but you know just a sentence even the whole world or most of the world are trying to review their economic ties with china the americans have said it in no uncertain terms the president has come out absolutely openly publicly and they are also reviewing their uh, you know their trade uh, ties with china and many other economic you know associations with them so is the european union so are others and india has uh, now just recently few days back only we have snapped links with them we have cancelled some infrastructural projects and things like that i'm sure the chinese will get a message some people say that you know they've got very deep pockets so even this closing of apps and you know not giving them a few contracts will not make much of a difference but i think it will because we have set the ball rolling and i think uh, not only america has applauded our decision so so have some other western countries yeah. and like that right. how as do we as, uh, sorry no i didn't answer your question as far as uh, 
certain technical things are concerned which they export to us yes we will we will uh, have to face the music for a certain time some of our big time importers who you know assemble laptops and my and your mobiles and all that but i am afraid that this is a good time a good opportunity time for us to to indulge in the atam nirbharta and yeah. self reliance and all but if, if nothing if, happens if they are not exporting actually they are also losing absolutely yeah uh, how do you see uh, chinese foreign ministry's spokesperson's uh, statement after prime minister's visit today uh, this is bit subdued kind of statement they are talking about lowering the temperature and let's not do anything which uh, creates some escalation at the border and situation should stay under control you know i must tell you i'm quite amused about the chinese foreign ministry spokesman and their chinese ambassador in delhi who's a very amiable man he talks all you know is always very uh, diplomatically if i can use the word diplomatically correct right so even the uh, the chinese foreign minister thing has been muted but you know they the, whatever they say and whatever their military does are two different things how can you even justify please tell me when when the chinese president she was uh, made his first maiden visit to india to gujarat uh, and you know uh, the prime minister was with him and you know he was warmly welcomed and all that and on the same day there was an intrusion in ladakh and it is such a closed society that nothing happens off the cuff it is not yeah. some local commander feeling great one day and say okay, let's go and knock out the indians <laughs> things like that Yeah. so you know they follow a very well rehearsed well conceived uh, you know well prepared and well implemented plan yes. which is very holistic you know embraces everything right. so i think again it was a, as you said very correctly it was a bit of a restraint but i think we'll have to wait uh, we'll have to wait for a detailed reply detailed response if, if i can use the word right. from the chinese foreign ministry and from the chinese communist party right sir global Before, times, yeah. as you know is their mouthpiece which mm -hmm. comes out every day on something or the other criticizing so, yeah. but last two three days uh, it has also come out once or twice you know with some uh, muted statements but we have to be very careful you i'm sorry i would not like to trust the chinese okay uh, sir you are a veteran intelligence officer i wanted to have your perspective on what happened in april may and june months uh, at the borders as intelligence man what would you caution against uh, have we made some mistakes in terms of anticipating uh, these activities by chinese you know i just like to draw your attention to the kargil uh, war in 1999 where there was a clear cut intelligence failure and there were lapses which were addressed by the kargil review committee which is a very fine uh, uh, review committee and then the group of ministers re recommended certain very i would say long term measures very very pragmatic long term measures which were implemented by the government over the years as far as this is concerned i think you know intelligence is uh, has got very diverse applications for example you have the human human intelligence troops on the ground you you know what you send inside this that and the other then you have various forms of technical intelligence which also includes imagery intelligence intelligence which is satellites you also have signals intelligence when you listen to you know people talking to each other on telephones on signals radio sets this that and the other now the point is in this case i i i don't have all the facts with me so i will not like to call it that there has been a major intelligence failure i'm sure the government after this the dark crisis is over will be uh, will carry out some review that why and how did we not come to know that the chinese are amassing so many troops tanks guns things like that when they cross the so called western highway which you know which is in the area of excitement which they have captured in 62 whenever a major movement takes place westwards we must come to know and we are fully capable we have got lots of equipment we have got all the uh, uh, or, sir, or or is it possible that uh, india had the intelligence but those who needed to process it and form a view and act on it they uh, somewhere lacked no that will be as i said it will be 
totally premature for us to you know uh, label anybody but the fact remains prima facie that there has been some intelligence lapses that we did not know that the chinese are amassing so many troops at so many points along in eastern ladakh you know across the lse we should have come to know and i'm sure that after this as i mentioned the crisis is over the government will carry out uh, that there are why this huge build up of the chinese at not one four places or more than four places in the eastern ladakh uh, east of the uh, line of control why did not it come to us i just like to make a mention here that every year they carry out an exercise we also carry out an exercise this and we really. inform each other so that there are no misgiving misgivings or any you know unnecessary uh, problems accrue mm -hmm. so what happened was this time we didn't do it because of pandemic the chinese did it but they also do it you know on the eastern side of the highway but this time when they cross the highway i'm afraid our intelligence agencies at various levels technical which are both civil and military civil and military they should have known well uh, i really do not know whether they came to know or they didn't come to know i don't wish to conjecture about such a serious uh, you know matter i agree uh, but you believe that in terms of capacity technical uh, expertise india is absolutely completely equipped absolutely there is no question about it and let me tell you we are improving by the day we are improving by the day i have no doubt in that it's it's it is not correct for me to mention what all we have got and what all we haven't got but having said that i can assure you there is good coordination between the intelligence agencies and you know uh, we get intelligence from yeah. various other you know agencies across outside the country also so there's nothing very much but somewhere uh, prima facie it appears that some information was lacking but and here yeah, also still I like mentioned about uh, this this cargill review committee report which had given you know the responsibility of one boundary to one force right but i'd like to make this um, this mention here i've also written about it that whichever portion of the uh, our boundaries with the adversaries are live throughout the year the responsibility there should not be with the paramilitary force or with any police organization it should be totally given to the army because in the end the army has to face the music so uh, i would with all due regards to the capabilities of others i would strongly suggest to my government that for please have uh, this uh, kindly review this recommendation of this one boundary one force and the paramilitary and the civil and uh, and the police organization are best used for internal security right uh, but this is very reassuring to know from you that in terms of capacity india uh, doesn't lack anywhere lieutenant general kamal dawar thank you for your perspective for our viewers thank you thank you my pleasure jai hind